Have you ever wanted to learn something new? Maybe an instrument or a sport or a new dance on TikTok? Whatever it was, you probably thought you'd just practice a few times and then boom, you'd have it down, right? Well, if you're anything like me, the reality of actually learning a new skill isn't that easy. Like take for example, a few years ago, my wife bought me a guitar because she knew that I had always wanted to learn how to play the guitar. So she bought it for me and I took a couple lessons and I watched some videos on YouTube. I even talked to a friend of mine who's been playing guitar for 20 years and he tried to teach me and I just, I couldn't pick it up. And it just, it didn't feel great to know I couldn't do that. And maybe you can relate, even if what you were trying to learn or do was different, if you struggled with it, then you know the feeling I'm talking about. You know what it feels like to just not think you're enough. And for a lot of us, when we feel like we're not enough, it really feels personal. At some point, I'm sure we've all felt this way. Like we just weren't good enough or smart enough or even just cool enough or just enough. Unfortunately, I think that's a pretty relatable feeling because big or small, we all probably have reasons to not feel like we're enough. Maybe some of us feel like this because of things we've done. We've messed up, we've made mistakes, we've done things we're not proud of. Maybe you cheated on a test or lied to your parents or spread rumors about somebody at school or called a kid a name that you knew was offensive. Maybe you thought about trying drugs or snuck out to go to a party or maybe you gave in to some pressure from your boyfriend or your girlfriend to just take things a little further than you wanted to. And while some people in your life may know some of these things that you've struggled with, there are other things that no one knows about. Things you've done that you've hidden because you don't want others to see you the way that you see yourself. You don't want them to know that you're not enough. Or maybe you struggled with this feeling in a different way. Some of us feel like we're not enough because we haven't done enough. Maybe we feel like we're not a good enough daughter or son or an athlete or a friend or a sibling or a musician or a student. Because even though we're working so hard to be good at these things, you still feel like somehow you aren't doing enough. You're still not good enough for your friends or your coaches or your parents or maybe even Jesus. When it comes to faith, you feel like you haven't prayed enough or read the Bible enough or shown up to church enough or just done enough of those right things to be good enough for Jesus. See what I mean? Whether it's because of what we've done or what we haven't done, we all have reasons to feel like we're not enough. And that feeling can leave us with a lot of questions. Will my friends still be my friends if they find out what I've done? Will my family understand? Will the people in my small group think of me in the same way? Will my coach ever think I'm good enough to start that big game? Or will my teacher ever give me that grade that I'm really trying to earn? And what about Jesus? You may wonder, does he still love me? Even if I've messed up or haven't prayed enough or haven't made the right choices, can I really be forgiven for what I've done? Can Jesus love and forgive for not being enough, for not doing enough? If you're struggling through these questions, let me assure you that you're not alone. And the story we're going to dive back into today is one that will help us see exactly how Jesus feels about us, no matter how we feel about ourselves. So at this time, we're going to turn to our small groups and discuss a couple questions and uh, really think about before you answer. Today, we're going to look again at a moment in the life of a guy named Zacchaeus. And like us, I think he was struggling with similar feelings. See, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and back then, tax collectors were generally hated because they were stealing from people to become rich. So that meant Zacchaeus had a bit of a reputation. And because of the things he'd done, others around him definitely didn't, didn't see him as good enough. But on this particular day in Zacchaeus's life, things changed. Because on this day, Jesus was coming through town. And like most people back then, Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus. He knew of all the cool, amazing things that Jesus had done, and he wanted a chance to get close to Jesus. So Zacchaeus went down to where the crowds had gathered, and since he was short, he climbed a tree to get a better look. <laughs> now, I can't know for sure, but I have to wonder if Zacchaeus climbed that tree not only because of his height, but also because he knew what other people thought of him. Maybe he thought with all of his mistakes and mess ups, the crowd would think he wasn't good enough to be close to Jesus. Maybe he felt they wouldn't welcome him there. 
Well, what I do know is that when Jesus noticed Zacchaeus in that tree, he called out to him. He went over to Zacchaeus, called him by name, and asked him to be a guest in his house that very day. Crazy and unexpected, right? Well, take a look at the way the people responded. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Luke chapter 19, verse 7. So basically, the people around Zacchaeus said, there's no way that this guy is good enough to have Jesus in his home. He's done so many bad things. Now keep in mind, these were the kind of people who felt like they'd definitely done enough. They thought they'd done all the right things, that they were the people Jesus should have looked at and chosen. And honestly, it would have been easy for Zacchaeus to feel like he wasn't good enough for this invitation either. I mean, he had a lot, lot of reasons to think that. He had done a lot of wrong to a lot of people, probably even to a lot of people in that very crowd. But Jesus knew all of that. He knew everything Zacchaeus had done, and he still made it personal. Out of all the people in the crowd, Jesus chose Zacchaeus. And in that moment, Jesus did for Zacchaeus what he does for each one of us. He breaks the barrier. All the shame and guilt and regret and fear and mistakes that we think might separate us from Jesus actually have no power to keep us from him at all. Jesus walks right through them and chooses to make it personal with us. Why? Because he loves us. See, it's personal because Jesus loves you no matter what. And what that means, just as you are, you are enough. There's no mistake you can make that will separate you from his love. There's no choice you need to make to earn his love. He loves you no matter what, and nothing you do or don't do will change that. It was true for Zacchaeus, and the same is true for you and me. Jesus sees everything we've done and will ever do. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And he still chooses us. He still loves us. It's personal because Jesus loves you no matter what. Now we're going to go back into our small groups and discuss a couple more questions. Just take this time to really think about the, the questions and think about your own life and really listen to what the other people in your group have to say. And I'll be back in just a few minutes. So how do we start to believe this is true? That we are enough? That Jesus loves us in a real and personal way just as we are? Maybe the best place to start is by naming it. Name what you feel is separating you from God. Maybe you're experiencing shame or guilt over something you did wrong, like a bad choice or a mistake. Or maybe you messed up in a way that no one knows about. Maybe you feel like it's keeping you from Jesus. Maybe for you, you feel like you haven't done enough of something. And that's keeping you from Jesus. You haven't spent much time praying or reading the Bible or showing up at church. And you feel like it's getting between you and Jesus. Whatever it is, name it. Confess it. Call it out, identify what you feel is separating you from Jesus, and tell him about it. Ask for his help, understanding and accepting his love for you just as you are. Pray that he will show you that nothing can separate you from his love. Then think about how you see or treat the people around you. Do you see them like they're not enough? Do you treat them like they don't deserve Jesus' love? Do you see kids at church and think they don't belong here because of what they've done? Ask Jesus to show you where you're not seeing others the way that he sees them, and pray that he will help change your heart. Remember, what Jesus did for us is the same thing he does for others. He makes it personal. He loves no matter what, and he calls us to do the same. He asks us to make it personal for others by treating them with love and acceptance no matter what. That could look like sitting with a new girl or guy at church, or inviting a quieter kid in your class to do something with you after school. Maybe it looks like showing kindness to someone who has hurt you in the past, or simply listening to a friend share about the mistakes they've made. Whatever it is, take a step to make it personal for others by showing them love and acceptance no matter what, because that's what Jesus did for us. Remember, it's personal because Jesus loves you no matter what. And one reason that we have small groups here at Victory is to reflect that love that Jesus has. Your small group loves and accepts you for who you are no matter what. It's a safe place where you can get personal with others who trust and care about you. As you turn back to your small groups, I want you to think about this question. Do I really believe that God loves me no matter what? Now I turn it over to the small group leaders. Feel free to end in a word of prayer and just remember that all of us here at Victory love you and we can't wait to see you again next week.